if it does get too tight, Trevor's gonna give him a correction and give him a word. He's gonna use easy or slow down, something to teach the dog to not be pulling. So now it's a little slow tight. Down. And then when the dog responds, he's gonna mark the behavior. You wanna tell these dogs when they are doing the right thing. Guys, it's been a while. Man, it's been a while. Listen, I ain't got a lot of time on my hands these days. But here we are with Stan from Iron Sharp K9. We're gonna walk through a dog that's pulling on leash. Now, I get a lot of behavioral questions. I've repeated this literally probably a hundred times. I'm not a behavioralist. I'm not a dog trainer. I'm accompanied by them and I'm very good at communication. And normally when I had just focused on dogs, I had to make sure my dogs are trained because my Nana who was 90 years old, she with two hip replacements, she ain't walking no dog. So you gotta let a Naya out. She need to be able to say. There's an owner back there. Okay. <laughs> she did. It's a dog coming out here. If it was a different dog, you say, oh, here we go with this man. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that dog got a leash on it. Yeah, he ain't got no leash and things get active. See what I'm saying? The camera come on. At any hoot, Stan's gonna walk us through how to communicate with your dog effectively so that the dog doesn't pull on leash. I know it's a taxing process. Uh, well, it's probably annoying if your dog is pulling, but even more importantly, hey, step one to 10, and really this is probably four or five steps, to getting your dog to follow your lead. Let's go, Stan. So we got a slip lead, right? First thing we will start with when we're teaching the dog not to pull is gonna be a slip lead. It is not a very intense correction, so we wanna use the least amount of correction to teach as we can. And then if we need to go up, we will. So slip lead, we're gonna take this off. I'll put it in my pocket for now. So slip lead, you wanna make sure it goes over his head and it's gonna be high and tight on that neck right there. And this is gonna give you a lot more communication. Yeah, and why is that, Cindy, you know? I think the nerves are probably a little bit more sensitive up there and then the further it goes down on the neck, they're gonna have more muscle. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Look, I can see that. And think of, as soon as you get close to these shoulders, it's hard to move somebody's shoulders. But if you snap their neck, that's why some people die. Now we ain't gonna snap his <laughs> neck. But, but you go, okay, let's see what this look like. <laughs> that's perspective, ain't it? You oh, like, man. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, snap that joker from right here, right? You see that dude grab that chin in. Oh, <laughs> so first line try. Let's go. Walk. All right, so we're walk, we're out on a walk, and we want to make sure the dog isn't pulling. And when he's pulling, that means this is tight tension. He's going. The dog can be in front, and that's perfectly fine. But as long as he's not making this walk uncomfortable, if it does get too tight, if it does get too tight. Trevor's gonna give him a correction and give him a word. He's gonna use easy or slow down, something to teach the dog to not be pulling. So now it's a little slow tight. Down. And then when the dog responds, oh, he's gonna oh, mark boy. the behavior. You wanna tell these dogs when they are doing the right thing. So now we'll go back the other way and see if he's gonna understand what these words are. Now remember people, dogs don't speak English, but they understand action. Oh man, that's the thing we all missed. That was <laughs> dog on mud, bro. He said, ain't doo doo. So Charles doing pretty good. All right. Good boy. And then all right. you see him start looking back, like, what am I supposed to be doing in this situation? So now he's pulling too much. We're going right. to change the direction on Tron. Tron knows the toys are down there, so he really wants to get there. And if he continues to pull, he's not going to get there. So we want to teach him that following our lead is going to get him those results. You see that dog over there now. All right, so walk back that way, Trey. <laughs> That's called redirecting. <laughs> there we go. Good boy. Good boy, Tron. All right. Good boy. Hey, people, from what I heard, go ahead and tell them about, hey, <laughs> less being more people. Think about it like anything. You start practicing bad reps, the dog doesn't really get a good perspective on how great to be. So you want shorter distances. I was asking Sam, was there a distance? Like, hey, should I do this for half a mile, a mile, two miles? Most of you, if you have a bully, he ain't gonna get you two. He ain't gonna get you two miles and still be cool. He'll be like, yeah. <sighs> and, and God forbid he get too over overheated because it's gonna be a wrap. But in this case, you said four or five steps, go ahead and walk them through that. Yeah, so you wanna keep it short because again, if we're going out far, your dog's gonna be tired and they're not gonna be doing the behavior, so they're not gonna learn. So I take five steps that way, five steps this way, and we're gonna go back and forth until the dog understands 
we're not going to pull because as soon as you start pulling, we're changing directions. And then they're going to start looking to the handler for instructions versus trying to just go where they want to go. And so we started with the slip lead. Mm -hmm. The prong collar comes in next. And so why is that? Yeah, so you see how sometimes he had to give a, a little bit of more correction for this, specifically going toward the, the toys. The prong is going to be a little bit more of an intense correction without having to really yank on the dog. So you can correct it the same amount of pressure that you did on the slip, but this is going to make him understand a lot quicker. There you go. And this right set, from my understanding, people, this is kind of like getting a bite from um, uh, like your mama. Yep. So your mama tap your shoulder. In the dog space, the mom will do a little light correction, hit you with the front teeth, tell you to back up or chill. And that's why you leave sometimes the pups with mother all the way up to eight weeks so she can deal with making sure they have good manners. And this right here, this, this maketh a mannerable dog. But it is not the end all be all because if you use it too much, the dog says, hey, I ain't got my prone collar on, I'm finna act a donkey. Yep. So, what do you do to make sure that you're still getting a good positive result when walking the dog without having to lean on this for, you know, all your walking? Yeah, so you want your words to be more powerful than any tool that they're using. So you want to allow about two to three seconds for the dog to process what is being told for them to do and change that behavior. If they don't stop that behavior, then you're going to correct. We want these dogs to understand the right way and the wrong way of how to be successful. Okay, and then last but not least, you switch to the flat collar. Oh. Yeah, give me one of them. <laughs> and the flat collar is again guys the whole time you you're hearing stan hopefully say communication 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 popping a dog don't mean nothing making sure that you and your dog's bond grows and even more importantly he un he or she understands you that's the key and another thing you want to think about, you want to kind of stop the behaviors before the dog goes red, especially dogs like this that were designed to not feel anything once they check out. If you see a dog coming on your walk, correct your dog before the action starts and then show them the proper way to be in these situations. Yeah. And that in itself, people, is redirecting and just making sure the dog, you have the dog's undivided attention. These dogs posture up relatively quick, and that posture is they're investigating, and if a dog gets too close, they don't care. So before, like he said, if I see a dog a quarter of a mile away, 200 meters, I say, hey, he look up. I had some treats, I give him a treat, start playing with him, getting him focused, tune him in every time. And then I'm like, oh, go ahead and walk past your dog. Good, more corrections if he's acting crazy, but he already now knows, okay, the dog's coming, I probably should chill. And that's just one experience, but that's advanced training in terms of leash walking when you start introducing distractions. Yep. So I'm glad the distraction came because Tron ain't going to really hit the leash for a dog. Ego and the general have been gone. <laughs> the general boy we seen in me in commercial, he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> And when you are doing stuff like this, you kind of want to set up scenarios. So if you have somebody else with the dog, have them walk by with their dog paying attention to them so you can get your dog to pay attention to you. Set up situations for your dog to be successful. In a real situation, you're not training. That's life or death for some dogs. Make sure they know what to do before those situations happen and you're going to have a lot safer dog. There you go, people. Now, listen, we're just going to walk you back this way again, another four or five feet. pretty good he's on his flat leash shout out to Kaizen for giving us a good collar slow and he didn't get no tension on the leash so it doesn't need to really have a correction there you go people and when you're on a walk with hey. your dog go on a walk with your dog it doesn't have to be in that heel position when that dog is in that heel it is a formal march you ain't seeing people walking like this for a mile they're just not gonna do it Give your dog a time and a place to be next to you and then allow your dog to investigate and explore. They're gonna use way more energy sniffing around than they are just walking next to you. Exactly, people, and as always, take care of your dogs.